Hello, hello, hello. I'm going to play some music for y'all. Do y'all remember this song? I have a breath, uh, not a mint, a hog in my mouth. This is like that mate from 2004. His welcome. His welcome back. <laughs> I just wanted to play a little bit of music as we were coming into the room. I'm just going to give everybody a few seconds. Uh-oh, hold on. I'll turn it down just a little bit. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Come on into the room. <clears throat> I'm excited about tonight. Hmm. He said, I don't drink liquor and all the game's over. This is when Mace had matured. <laughs> he went to Mason. <laughs> All right, I'm going to give it um, just a few more seconds if everyone is coming into the room. And in the meantime, I will take the time to introduce myself. I am Kiana Shaw, CEO of Lead Hership Academy. And you're a prevention and early intervention specialist, author, four time best selling author. What else? Um, certified breakthrough parenting instructor and a host of other dashes like like dash mommy dash daughter dash you know auntie whatever. <laughs> and I'm glad that you're in the group. I'm glad that you are enjoying this video here in the group. And I wanted to do hey Trey, that's my sister, you guys. Hey, thanks for joining. She has a beautiful seventeen. Is, is there is there a seventeen? beautiful 17 year old daughter who is just like a wonderful kid like she is doing parenting right y'all <laughs> that's not to say perfect but it is right right because sometimes we try to get all that to get together and put the perfection in and it doesn't work like that um so we're going to talk about the seven piece of parenting i'm going to remove my halls from my mouth <laughs> Because I'm having a hard time talking <laughs> while I'm um, sucking on it. My throat has been hurting. I've been sick, but that's okay. We're going to push forward. Um, and so we're going to talk about the seven Ps of parenting today. So I'm going to give you the seven Ps, and then we'll talk about them in detail as I go through my notes because I don't want to forget anything. And so the seven Ps of parenting are pause, presence, not present, but presence, uh, patience, perspective, problem solving, play, and peace. Okay, so you guys get those? I'm going to go through each one of them. So you have the pause, and I think the important thing about the pause is that when we take time to pause, to kind of separate ourselves from the situation, when we take the time to go, okay, this is what's going on. This is the information I just had. Let me separate for a moment so that I can process what I'm hearing, so that I can... Um, take a minute and de-escalate my own anger right because we get angry as moms we get upset with our daughters because of the information that we found out and the thing is is that if we stay in that space and deal with them from that emotional space it's hard for us to come back from that right because usually when we deal in an emotional space we say things we do things we don't want to do or that we wouldn't say or wouldn't have said or have done if we had taken a moment to just pause. And so the pause is um, very important to create a stillness inside of us. Sometimes it's just a woosah, right? Because if you say woosah, that's fine too. Sometimes it's just like one of those moments where you're just like, I just cannot deal with this. I cannot deal with this piece of information. Hey, Cash, thank you for joining it's like when you can't deal with that piece of piece of information. So the pause in parenting is so important uh, because we need to allow ourselves and our kids an honorable space so that they can have a moment and we can have a moment before the emotional reaction. Do y'all get that? Okay. Um, and this is a gift that we not only give ourselves, but we give our kids because a lot of times when we don't pause, we have a very reactive moment and then we, we whoop our kids, we punch them, we, you know, pop them in the mouth or whatever the case may be. And it just does not go well. Right. So um, I see you guys are going in and out. So I'm going to check real quick just to see if um, my hope is that 
it's not cutting off so give me just a second just to check on that I don't know if I get great reception here but it looks like we're having just a little bit of a delay but I think we're okay all right so going back to the seven P so the second P is our presence and there is this is more than just the physical presence of us um, this is the emotional and spiritual and mental presence that we have and what do I mean by that it's cuddling them and still remembering that even though they are 17 they're still kids it's grabbing them and saying I, I understand how you're feeling I validate your feelings I validate your experience even if you brought it on yourself right because I think that sometimes we go well you brought it on yourself and that's that but think about all the things that we brought ourselves from relationships to I don't know being involved in something that got us in trouble with the law we still had feelings we still had an emotional need from our parents to know that everything was going to be okay and while sometimes it's okay to go well deal with your mess um, and let your kids feel that a little bit it's still important to gather them and go okay I get it like you messed up you messed up big and you still have to make amends for it but I got you do y'all get that do you see how that's important okay and so that let's see to be present in our parenting partnerships with our children and yes they are partnerships I think that a lot of times we go mommy's up here you're right here not how that works because they're still an, an a, they're still a human being and they're here with us having an experience and they're going through the situation and they don't have the emotional wherewithal or the mental wherewithal to go forward and a lot of times we just kind of go well deal and we leave them in the balance and so I want to make sure that we're not doing that um, and that we are, we're correcting ourselves right and sometimes you correct yourself and you're able to go to your kid and say hey I was wrong but a lot of us are not there yet that's fine we just need to make sure that we correct it in ourselves and then stop the hurtful behavior does that make sense um, <coughs> oh, um, and then understanding what our child's ego or, or what our child's behavior is telling us outside of our own ego because a lot of times we go Oh my god they're embarrassing me you know better you know I've taught you better than that you you're embarrassing me and the kid is going I ain't trying to embarrass you I'm trying to get through this life I'm trying to function and so we have to remember that so the third P is patience and patience is a virtue and a necessary evil as we course through our parenting journey uh, but it's needed through many of the phases and stages of our children's growth um, including our own growth we still need patience we still need to be able to process we still need to be able to go through um, each aspect of our lives and that's okay it is perfectly okay that that we need to go through these things and the definition of patience is the captivity to accept or tolerate delay trouble or suffering without getting angry or upset that was not me <laughs> that was not me but as we pause and stay fully present right as we pause and stay fully present um we really can how do i want to say this we can build our patience and we can have a balanced perspective on the partnership between us and our kids does that make sense okay and then number four is perspective which I love this one because what I wrote was regarding our children's perspective um, give them empowerment validation and an inner voice of self-knowing right so they can trust themselves they can go okay I have a this is how I see it and let me make this move based on my knowledge right and we do that all the time like whether you call it perspective whether you call it dealing with people according to knowledge excuse me whatever it is we have that and as we are able we, we may not agree or understand their perspective but what we can do um and usually it's because they will not agree with our perspective like you know we're coming from an age difference we're coming from an experience difference and so it really makes a difference um 
and, and that's okay. But um, we are the first place in life that they will come to know how to embrace their, I will teach them to embrace their own thoughts, embrace their own emotions. Um, and so being able to train our kids to listen to that inner voice uh, that we give them, it comes from giving them a safe platform to be able to be wrong without judgment. So what that looks like. Mom, I'm going to take the car. I'm going to um, go with my friends. You know, we're going to a party. And, you know, there'll be about four of us in the car. Well, as a mom, I would go four people in a car, you know, because in my mind, I'm thinking the number one cause of death for teenagers is car accidents. Four, four people total, that's a distraction. So you can have one person right to ride with you whoever lives closest to the house so that you can drop that person off and you're not in the car by yourself for a long time that's my perspective as a mom whereas your teenage daughter's perspective is but we just rolled into the same party how come everybody can't go together well because Susie lives on that side of town and Dana lives on that side of town and so it doesn't work out whereas Judy lives literally around the corner that's that um so we have to you know, I, I think that that's one of the most important parts is just really understanding um, the perspective side. Let me check and see if you guys have any questions, because if you have any questions, please let me know. Please, please, please. And I'm going to refresh and see if there are any questions thus far. <clears throat> Excuse me. And there is a bit of a delay, so that could explain all the jumping in and jumping out. You guys are probably trying to refresh. I don't know why it gives me such a delay. Maybe I'll try to um, record them from a different place from now on. Because I don't like the delay either. All right. So number five, the fifth P. So we, we, we've gone through pause, presence, patience, and perspective. So now we're going to go into problem solve. So one of the keys in life and learning how to promote um, problem solving um, or just one of the keys is, is to learn how to how to problem solve. So with that, we want to promote it as parents. We want to promote uh, problem solving techniques, problem solving um, comfort, right? Because a lot of times our kids will just be like, I don't know how to do this. I'm going to wait for you. And you don't want a 37 year old man or girl, or, you know, or woman, I should say, um, waiting for you as a mom to make a decision for them. You just don't want that. So uh, problem solving, whether in our homes, with our children, our spouses, um, in the corporate world, with our professional relationships, no matter what it is, um, we can find a balance and harmony in situations that prevent struggles and contention. And our children look to us for guidance in many areas that uh, many times we fall short unconsciously. Like we, we don't mean to give them bad advice, we, but the reality is sometimes we don't know how to problem solve. Or maybe we don't know how to problem solve that one problem and then we just kind of let it go, right? So you don't know how to really address your student loans, so you just don't pay them. And now your wages are being garnished. Like those are the types of things that we have to think about um, when we're dealing with our teenagers. How am I not problem solving? And how can I rectify that so that I can stand in integrity when I talk to my kids? Do you get that? Okay, so by default, we fear failure. So if we see our children subjected to, to the same thing, uh, we try to jump in and save them. And we don't want them to feel... The pain or the hurt that comes with failure, but that's a very good pain. That's a very good hurt because a lot of times it builds resilience. So don't be afraid to let them fall um, and make bad choices, right? As long as it's not going to hurt them, as long as it's not going to kill them, as long as it's not breaking the law, let them make some bad choices every now and then because they'll never learn if all of their decisions are the right one, right? Because how many of us are able to just learn from other people's mistakes in everything we do. Like we had to make some of those decisions ourselves so that we could feel the pain, so that we can understand the emotions that go behind it, so that we can understand 
the ups and downs, the balance, the ebb and flow of it. All of that was important. All of it was important. So we want to make sure that we're allowing our kids to deal with that. But uh, we also don't want to cheat them out of learning how to solve the problem. And also we don't want to cheat them out of a great life by just letting them fall through the cracks. So a, a balance in that is really important. And then number six, play. When was the last time you played with your kids? When was the last time you just did a game of Uno, some Sorry, some Candyland, some, you know, Operation. I was at Chuck E. Cheese with my daughter last week, and I was like, let's play Operation, right? And I just took her, uh, this was actually two weeks ago, whatever the election was, because I was like, you know what? It's just way too much adulting going on. Let's go play. Let's go do some fun stuff that kind of releases the stress of it all. And we had a great time. One of her godmothers joined us. We really did. We had a great time. So as we get older, we seem to steer away from play and we become a little bit more serious or way too serious. And um, I don't know why that is, but I do know that at the core of, of us is a childish desire to, that's waiting to get out and waiting to go do some fun stuff. And our children are trying to pull that out of us all the time. And we are trying to hold that and suppress that because we have bills. We have cleaning. We have our own studies. If you're in a master's program or a bachelor's program or, shoot, even just trying to get your high school diploma as an adult. You got to go to work. You got to figure out. It's like there's a lot of stress on us. But if we never take the time to play, we don't release that stress. Because if you're not taking the time to play, chances are you are not going to the spa. Um, a lot of the um, surveys that came back the, for the Marvelous Mommy of the Week, absolutely everyone is going, I, I, I go to the spa to rejuvenate, but I haven't been there in a couple of years. So then you don't go to the spa to rejuvenate. You feel me? <laughs> <clears throat> and so that's been extremely important. Um, and we'll talk about um, that a little bit more in a couple of weeks um, when I roll out. I'm going to do... Um, for myself, because I'm getting ready to turn 38. So the last, my birthday is January 8th. So I think December 1st or December 2nd, I roll out 38 to 38. And so that's going to be a fun um, course. It's going to be, um, I'll probably start it a little bit early or we'll end it a little bit after my birthday. But I, I'm really excited to do like a six week like this complete mommy program of a paradigm shift and how um, it's just really a great way to move forward into the new year and then have a little bit of support as the new year starts. And then um, to be able to just kind of do some things where playing is part of the course. You don't finish it until you show me that you played. Show me some pictures of you and your kid at an amusement park, at the park, just kind of chilling whatever just play a family game night i mean listen oh the game uno has saved my family from many arguments many of you know after this function we're not dealing with you anymore <laughs> it has settled like that is our gambling dispute settler <laughs> like uno is the best <laughs> so getting out and playing with your kids engage with them when your teenage daughter see you as being too serious, she does not want to engage with you. Does that make sense? We have to be sure that we are engaging with our daughters. And that comes through being playful. That comes not just being serious all the time. It can't always be, I'm the mama, and you do what I say, or you, you get out. Like, that cannot always be your default. It just can't. And so the last one is peace. So... Let me just go back. Well, I'll do this and then we'll go back up. So at the end of the day, we all desire a home with peace in it, right? We want to come home to the love, the joy, the peace. And a lot of times when we have teenagers, that stuff is just gone. Nothing that we did wrong. It's just there's a lot of hormones and there's a lot of all kind of imbalance, <laughs> imbalances. And so one that exudes the, an aura of tranquility, um, togetherness, and purpose, is a sense of freedom that becomes a part of family's fabric and everybody is able to just be open and everyone's able 
people at ease with no exceptions. That is real peace. That's real peace in our homes. That's real peace in our lives. And we really want to make sure that um, somebody sent me a screenshot of me teaching this. Like, I don't get it. <laughs> Thank you, but I just don't understand. <laughs> um, but when, where, when there is peace, our children feel safe and contained within the boundaries, the healthy boundaries of our families and what we have set in our homes. And parenting is an accumulation of many, many, many components that we bring over the span of our lifetime. And because of that, when we can all go to sleep at night with peace in our hearts, right, peace in our hearts, peace of mind, that we're creating the best conditions for our children to thrive in and that we can rest with a peaceful mind knowing that we've done our best, right? And so we want to make sure that we are bringing peace and that we're establishing the creators of it. We're the moms. We're the creators of the peace. You, you hear the same time, if mama not happy, ain't nobody happy. That is so true. So that tells we, we create the peace. We set it. So let me just recap. We have pause, P, uh, pause, presence, patience, perspective, problem solving, playing, and peace. And so those are the seven P's of parenting. I hope you have enjoyed this. Um, if you're watching the replay, please, please, please um, feel free to tag someone else that is in the group. And then tomorrow, we're going to do um, the Marvelous Mommy of the Week that comes out every Tuesday. Uh, Thursday, we'll do... I forget what I called it. I forget what I called it um, on Thursday. Hey, Naisha, thanks for jumping in. I forget what I called the Thursday uh, thing where I do the grid on, like, who has been like liking commenting promoting just to thank you uh, it's my way of saying thank you uh to everyone in the group and so that'll be there um now you should make sure you check out the replay and then also we have the um um coming up i'm gonna do the two-hour webinar the i choose to be a lady mommy webinar hi queen <laughs> I used to so good for my self-esteem. <laughs> I'm going to do the mommy webinar and I'm going to take two hours. I don't have the book next to me. I'm going to take two hours and go through um, the book. I choose to be a lady basic life lessons for our daughters. You can either sign up for the webinar. It's just um, 12 Oh five, right? So on 12 five for just 12 Oh five, you can be a part of the webinar and you can ask all your questions. You can, um, it's, it's specific to the book, and when you do, when you sign up, when you register, there's an option to add the book to your register, and then you get like $5 off the book, which is great, and we still ship it out to you for the same price, uh, and it'll go out the very next morning, and then also, what is it, it's the shipping, it's the book, um, the taxes, of course, are included, but you get $5 off the book, and um, effective next Thursday, this Thursday, because this is the week of Thanksgiving. Um, on Friday, the price of the webinar goes up to $47. So get it for $12.05 by signing up before Friday, because at midnight, it changes over. All right, and then let me see, what else? I think that was it. So, I, oh, I mentioned the paradigm shift, right? And so that is going to be a um, course uh, that I'll do just for the mommies, and I'll also do a six-day course, and you'll hear about that when we uh, do the webinar, because the people on the webinar will get the first crack at the six-day course for your daughters. The six-day course is literally a series of um, emails and assignments that go that coincide with the book. Isn't that great? Don't you just love that? <laughs> and that that's going to be very inexpensive, and it is going to be on a first-come, first-served basis, because I think I'm going to limit it to 10 participants. I think I'm going to limit it to 10 participants just so that we can iron it out. Um, it'll be the first time we roll it out in this capacity. And so I really want to make sure that everyone's daughter. And then like <laughs> a friend of mine said, I'm making it a requirement to her getting a Christmas. Like if she really wants a good Christmas, she has to do the course. <laughs> and I was like, I love that idea. I do. Negotiation. It's all about that. Especially if your daughter has not been doing what she's supposed to be doing. 
you know she's going to have a struggle reading the book, this is a great way to tie it into something else that she wants. Negotiations are good, in my opinion. So, <laughs> it'll be a great thing. And Aisha says, cool, yay. I hope to see you on the um, two-hour webinar, Aisha. And then I also, I think what I'm going to do, if for everyone who joins, and you guys remind me of this, right? Aisha, like, tag me in a group with this post. So, <laughs> for everyone who joins the I Choose to Be a Lady, a Lady Mommy webinar, then that 12.05, like, you pay your 12.05, that 1205, I will credit to the price. Like I'll do a code. And it'll take twelve dollars and five cents off of the cost of the six day uh, program for your daughter. Does that sound fair? I think that sounds fair. Naisha, can you remind me? So that I can tell the other Naisha before I get in trouble. Cause sometimes I just say stuff and she'd be like, This is not the plan. This was not the plan. <laughs> But I love it. I love doing that kind of stuff. And I just think that to take 1205 off of it would be a great thing. Because I think the course is like, I think it's $67. Don't quote me. But I think it's $67. So let me do the math on that real quick. So if it's $67 minus $1205, that takes it to $54.95. But if it was $47 minus $1205, that takes it to $34.95. And that's a great way to, um, I mean, $35 for, you know, a six-day course where your daughter is going to go through the book. You know she's going to go through the book. She has to go through it. I will give a certificate of completion at the end. How awesome is that? If she don't get a certificate of, of, of appreciation, I'm sorry, of completion, then you just say you didn't finish the course because everyone who finishes the course gets the certificate. How awesome is that? And then she can't argue it. And she has like, I think we'll roll it out. Let's see. I'm still planning this in my head. As you guys can see, I have not spoken to my assistant about this. So that's going to get me in a lot of trouble. But I think if we did it the week before Christmas, the 19th through the 24th. Yeah, they have. Because they're out of school that week. They're out of school that week. That'll be good. All right. So that's what we're doing. Naisha, can you email that to me? <laughs> Or, or can you tag uh, Naisha Alexander for me so that she can uh, listen to this and know what I said? Because I don't know what I said. All right. Good night, you guys. I'm going to call my daughter back and enjoy some mommy time because she is with her dad on Monday nights. So I'm just going to um, get my five minutes of funk in with her where um, I can kind of go through her homework assignments. I love to do that with her. Uh, she's three, so her homework is like a sight word which today I think it's R, A-R-E, and then a shape, a number, a uh, letter, and I make her say I'm in English and Spanish, and then she'll show her dad the sign language for whatever it is. And that's it. Life of a three-year-old. How easy is homework? <laughs> All right, I'll talk to you guys later. Have a good night. Bye-bye.